Some weeks ago, the Gibraltar Regiment held a selection weekend here at Buena Vista Barracks. Sixty young men, all of them hoping to be accepted into the Gibraltar Regiment Reserve, were invited to come along and get a taste of the army. Tonight, in Jibline, we follow those young men over that weekend, as they underwent a series of exercises and tests designed to assess their skills. And it was a very hectic three days indeed. The man responsible for the selection weekend is the training officer of the Gibraltar Regiment, Captain John Ritchie. Well, we have normally um, more people that we can cope with that are interested in joining the regiment, which is a very healthy state to be in. And what we do is that we give them a chance through the selection weekend to see what the regiment is all about so that they don't join something which in the end they might regret. And also it gives us a chance to pick what we hope will be the best of those that apply to join the regiment. During the weekend they are in fact technically civilians and what we do is we ensure ourselves against any accidents that may possibly happen. Um, but they are technically civilians, we do not embody them and also it is made very clear to everybody concerned that they can leave at any time that they want. The idea of the selection weekend, as we said, is to give them an insight into the regiment. And if halfway through, halfway through the Saturday or the Sunday, they don't like what they see, then they're free to leave at any time. Also, should they not be able to take it physically, I mean, for whatever reason, they can leave as long as, obviously, they let us know beforehand for purely for a point on safety. I mean, we don't want people disappearing. Um, and at the, by the same token, we are also empowered to say to a guy halfway through, look, you're probably wasting your time. You're not suitable for this. I suggest you, you know try again some other time. Working uh, 40 hours uh, a week at, uh, in, in an office, it gives me a form of uh, sort of escapism running around uh, the rock. I still don't know what it's going to be like. Um, hopefully uh, the discipline will go well with me and uh, I'll make something of it. One mattress cover, two sheets, two pillows, one pillow slip and two blankets. Make sure you put these mattress covers on. This can be picked up. If it gets damaged, lost, stained, or anything, you will be held responsible for it. Nobody else. The response for people wanting to join the regiment is fairly good, and we normally always have a waiting list. Now, in order that we don't waste our time and your time, because you might well make a mistake in joining the regiment and then find that you don't like it and probably want to leave very shortly afterwards. And also so that it helps us to try and get the best of you to join us, and which is also obviously to the benefit of the regiment as a whole. I've trained a bit for it, uh, knowing that uh, they tend to be a very, it tends to be a very grueling uh, two and a half days, where they try to weed out all the um, people who they seem or they think that they won't, uh, won't fit in. My stay is Sergeant Fack. This is Sergeant Gaines. You will be seeing quite a bit of us over the next two days. What we're going to do now is a quick tour of the rock. Two shortcuts for those who don't know their way around. You can take that one. Yeah. Okay, okay Marcus, we? Okay. Right, stay close again. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. And the weekend really starts with a long introductory run. We give them academic tests, basic academic tests. We're not after GCO level standards or anything like that. But obviously we, we want anybody who joins us to be able to, to read and write and, and be able to add two and two together. Thankfully, most people can do that in this day and age, but it's, it's good for us to, to check. And it's also a guideline, should we have to um, decide on one guy or another one. Um, it also helps to decide who to take in. Also, the physical side um, has great prominence in the, in the program. Uh, we really do test them to the limit. Mentally and their attitude are also tested, uh, the, their approach to the regiment. And one of the things that we use, one of the methods that we use to test this is that at no time during the weekend do they know what's coming next. So, I mean, from the time that they join us on Friday night up to until whatever time they leave us on Sunday, we have a program, obviously, that we keep to. Um, but they're working from approximately 6 in the morning when they start off usually with a run to about midnight or just after. Non-stop virtually, there's just the odd breaks for lunch and a few rest periods put in. 
um, and they have no idea what's coming next. And this does tax people mentally, we find, and a lot comes out from, from that. In fact, we found that even though the program itself um, is not known to the candidates that come in, the concept behind what we do was we found in this particular year filtering through and we, we sort of felt that although they didn't know what they were actually doing the next period, so to speak, that they had an idea overall what was required of them. Um, so what I want to do now is for the next weekend that we have next year is to change it completely. Now obviously I'm not going to say what we're going to do, but for any up-and-coming candidates who think of joining us, uh, they'll be pleased to know that they'll have lots of surprises for them. We're, we're changing it drastically. Yeah. We, would, we would obviously like to have more time, um, but it does give us a very good guideline to work on. Um, it, it is a fairly long period. We are talking about sort of Friday evening right through. And remember, they are working into the night, not just sort of normal working hours. We have them with us for a fair period of time during those three days. And it, it, yes, it is certainly enough. Obviously, if we had longer, we would go deeper into a lot of other subjects, but it is, in fact, uh, quite workable as it is. You should Sergeant remember, John. Sergeant Gibson is demonstrating for you. <coughs> Whilst being the copper, that is from your case. Inside, what you see, it's a primer. It's what ori originally initiated the bang of the gun. Yes, that will ignite gunpowder inside, or your charges inside, consequently, right through this. Because you have the shell at the front. We, we weren't, in fact, trying to teach them at any stage how to work the machinery or fire a rifle or anything like this. Uh, what, what we were doing was that we like to give them a choice as to what they would like to join, what subunit of the regiment they would like to join when eventually they join the regiment. Um, because of our requirements, obviously, the, the needs of the regiment come first. And if 50 people want to join the battery and only 15 are required, then obviously that takes precedence and we decide who goes in. But it is always better to have a, somebody who is happy in a particular job. So we give them a choice, and if we can possibly do it, we allow them to go into the subunit of the choice. Now, in order for them to see or to make um, a judgment as to where they want to join, we give them a presentation on each of the major subunits, which is the battery, the air defense, and the, and the company. And each subunit in this case had an hour um, of their own, and they repeated this presentation three times, and they were split up into three groups, seeing what each part of the, of the regiment did and, and worked on. If we found when, in this weekend and the other two that we've done before that the youngsters that come up put a, a terrific amount of energy and seal into everything that they do. They're after all not used to working like this. They're not used to being shouted at and, and pushed around and, and working probably from six to in the morning till midnight every for three days solid. And it, I often find it very surprising that a youngster voluntarily takes this on and copes successfully with it. And, and in fact, our impression is that they put a great deal of work into it and they probably come out all the better for it, having been pushed around as they have. The other guys, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody happy? Yeah. yeah. Background's clear, full tax plus. And noti so notify the number one. He fires. Unload! Unload! The idea of the net is to break the silhouette of the Land Rover and be able to work comfortably, or quite comfortably, whilst at the same time the enemy cannot spot you. Especially at night. If you look at night, you won't see, you think this is a, just bushes and trees or whatever. You will not be able to see what it's all about or what's going on in there. Inside, you have rare. In other words, from here is where the whole of the infantry company can be 
um, collected and formed into different formations and orders acted upon. Inside the Land Rover you have two radios which are called 353s. Watch forward. Number one, stand up. Number one. You see him? Yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. those weapons have got a range of. In this particular case, that task was given to two, two of our PSIs who were attached to us from the Royal Artillery, which is Sign Gate and Sign Buck. And they did wonders in fact, where you saw them yourselves, where they had lots of, sort of about six different stands. Uh, which we call initiative tests, where you know you have the usual thing where you have a barrel which you have to cross over a gap and you have a plank and, and a length of road which is not as long as you would want it to be and, and that sort of thing. There were about um, a number of these tests were carried out and they worked in groups of about five or six and they moved around from one to the other so that every group in fact tried every test and of course apart from the mental uh, bit that has to be worked out they were also in fact very physically demanding also. Well, it's been um, very hard physically, and um, but most of it has been very enjoying. We had a good time, and we've learned quite a lot about the regiment. It was very good. It was fun, really. Tiring, but fun. Uh, mostly, there's been a lot of uh, comradeship. Um, up to now, only about uh, two or three have uh, gone away and uh, left the group. Uh, I believe that this has been through all of us sticking together and uh, pushing people when they've uh, flagged a bit. So uh, it's created a good uh, feeling between all of us, and uh, we hope that all of us will qualify for the 15-day camp and uh, we'll keep together. Since uh, half past seven on um, Friday when we came in, We've had quite a good number of recruits, about 59, and uh, it's been really hectic. We're keeping on the go all the time. I mean, the aim is to try to tie them out and make see some sense into it, like the military life or something like that. Eventually, we've, we've had two drops out, but uh, it's been really, really hard. As regards effort, all of them 100%. Um, I think they all put their heart into it. I think they've pulled through. Some of them obviously don't know what the selection weekend is all about. They don't know what to expect. And this is precisely how our program is planned. So they keep not knowing what to expect. 
it's part of uh, the testing, really, where they can, to, uh, they can adapt to having, say, a relatively easy time and then be asked to do something really hard and so on. I think they've really come through excellent. I mean, when you see them, they're quite a mixed crowd. Uh, you don't really know their background. You might know some of them. They might have been through school. You might know them personally. But they're all a mixed crowd. And they've got to react in their own particular individual way. As regards effort, 100%. From my point of view, it's been very hard work. But I think the lads have enjoyed it. started at the beginning uh, competing against each, each other and uh, at the end eventually we we came up as teams helping one another we've come to the end of the weekend all right we've <coughs> got to do a quick debrief now on all the things we've been doing we're going to try and get some views from yourselves as to what you think could possibly be done to improve it for others that come after you any ideas you might have, you're the people who've been through it, and most likely than not, you're the ones who are going to have points to bring up more than anybody else. I hope that generally you've enjoyed it. I can say on behalf of everybody who's been helping out that it's been good working with you. You put a lot of effort into it, a great deal of effort, particularly this morning when we did the assault course and the teamwork, where you're carrying the log around. It wasn't as heavy as you were told, it really wasn't. Um, a lot of effort went into that, okay? So well done. A lot of effort going into the whole weekend. And whether you're in or out, I hope you've enjoyed it. And now, a few points before we go. First of all, is there anybody amongst you, before I tell you who is in and who is not, that does not want to remain in the TA? This weekend, all right, let me hasten to add, first of all, gives you an indication of what is to come. But I must admit that having finished your recruit training, the pace is not as pushed as it has been over the weekend. Over the weekend, we have a limited time, and obviously we have to push anybody who has second thoughts and who does not want to stay on. Good. Is there anybody who feels he may have problems with his employers and not be able to stay on? Right. In that case, it gives me great pleasure to tell you that you're all in. We've found that we could take everybody on, that we had no, to track nobody out of the weekend. There were, in fact, two that left voluntarily during the weekend, which is fair enough. But of those that left, we ourselves did not have to take anybody out. We felt that everybody who finished the weekend was capable of joining the regiment and be a worthwhile asset to the regiment. Um, we haven't been, I don't think, mistaken having now gone into the recruit camp. And one thing that we tried in this particular recruit camp uh, following the weekend, something in fact we've never tried before, um, is that at the end of the 12 days training, we did what we called an end of camp parade. Um, we asked them to invite their families up 
And in fact, we were very glad and very pleased to see that virtually all the seats, in fact, all the seats that we put up, that we, we expect about 250 uh, people come up. And they all came up, they all enjoyed it. They saw what they were capable of doing on parade. And what, if one considers that during those 12 days, which we call 12 days training, they were really not just working towards that passing our parade. That was a decision that was arrived halfway through the camp when we saw the standards and we thought that we might try to put it on. Um, they were also doing things like field craft, which, which is camouflage and concealment, um, and moving around, crawls, all the different infantry, basic uh, crawls and so on. They were doing weapon training and firing the SLR. Uh, they also did weapon training on the GPMG, which is a general purpose machine gun. Um, they did a full course on first aid. They did a number of educational periods on the regiment, historical and otherwise. And in other, in other words, they were really very much uh, pushed all the, all the way through. And to think that at the end of those 12 days, over and above this, they could put on a parade, be it not a ceremony of the keys. I mean, we never expected those standards. Um, but greatly through the efforts of our drill sergeant major, sergeant major federal, and the efforts certainly of the recruits, um, in that they put all they had into it, possibly again because of the families were coming up more than anything else, um, it was a very successful, a very successful parade.